Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back, all that good stuff. Hope you're having an awesome day. And if not, like go make it an awesome day because awesome days are just fun to have or something. I don't know. Hey, uh, so um, I've done two videos in a row about Aurora HDR. You, hopefully you've seen them. If not, check them out, unless you don't care about it, in which case don't check them out, I guess. But um, I'm gonna do a Luminar video today and it's just a workflow video. I've got a shot that I took in Rome a couple of years ago. It's a blue hour at the Vatican. I got some streets, I got a nice sky, I got some architecture and some twinkly lights and all that stuff. It's kind of a combination of all my favorite stuff. Like number one, um, like cityscapes. Number two, blue hour. Number three, city lights on during blue hour. Number four, Europe, um, which I love. And these are not in that order in a, in a particular order, whatever. These are random things, but um, street scenes with line. Let me just shut up and show you the photo. So. Here's the photo. Um, this is the Vatican at blue hour. There's the before and the after. I'm gonna walk through a little workflow here, share some tips and tricks. Let's get going. Okay, so here we are. Uh, I've got a number of layers. I'll try to rip through this here, but the first thing I did is crop the photo. So let me show you that. Um, I went with a 16 by nine crop. I took out some of that foreground and what I found, um, well not what I found, but what I'm experiencing, I guess, is that I'm finding more and more that I really like the 16 by nine crop and primarily it's because I generally shoot kind of wide. Um, so like 16 millimeters, 16 to 35 is my wide angle lens. And even if I'm not using that, I'll shoot a lot with my 24 to 70. Uh, anyway, I'm often at the wide end of those focal ranges or, or focal lengths. And so um, if you're in certain places like uh, in a city like this where you're shooting in the middle of the street, it's hard often to get a something of interest in the foreground. Now I've got lines here and some things that are uh, like uh, patterns, for lack of a better word, that are in the uh, street, but it's not like a really interesting element. And so um, those wider focal lengths, you're gonna have more of that foreground, you know, depending on how you frame the picture, of course. But the way I frame them generally is, I like those leading lines, but I find that I'm getting a lot of extra space, kind of dead space. Um, and I shoot with the Sony full frame camera, so that's a three to two aspect ratio. Uh, but regardless, I'm getting some of that dead space down below and I'm cutting it out basically with the 16 by nine crop. I also did a tiny bit of straightening, so that's that. But here's the base photo, blue hour in Rome, that's the Vatican. Uh, single exposure F22, which uh, that tight aperture is why you got all these little starbursts on the street lights. Um, I did not put the sun filter on, you know, eight times or something like that. Um, and uh, anyway, let me just jump into it. I started with the tone filter, which um, this, I believe, I gotta be honest, I don't recall, um, but the uh, this layer, this base layer, actually I think was one of my presets, but I don't really know. But anyway, uh, tone filter gives a little bit of contrast and smart tone and, and taking down the highlights. Um, you know, I went from that to that. It's it's subtle, to be honest, mostly seen in the sky, but that's cool. Um, color temp, I, uh, I just warmed it up a little bit, actually, which isn't something I often do. Um, I did add some tint as well, but I'll often create things to be a little bit bluer, but in this case, I went from that to that. I like the warmth of the lines, you know, down both sides and the street uh, contrasting with that blue sky. So I just kind of accentuated that. Um, and then I kind of reverse course a little bit by going into color balance. Uh, amazing filters, so much control over colors. But as you can see, shadows, I went a little bit cooler uh, and a little bit towards the magenta. I'm a big fan of that kind of magenta color. Uh, when you're in blue hour. I think the blue and that magenta just work well together, so I tend to do that a lot. Midtone, I went a little bit more toward the bluish or the cyan, and highlights, um, I actually did the same. I went to the cyan uh, away from the red and to the blue away from the yellow. So the overall result is going from a predominantly yellow photo to one that's a little bit darker and moodier. And also, if you notice, it seems to basically change the contrast because I've gotten darker tones, right? So. I, um, I'll often be, you know, when you're using color balance, just be aware of that. Sometimes, especially if you're moving the blues, it can create really dark areas, which creates more contrast in the photo. So something to think about. Saturation, vibrance, got to give it a little kick. So I did that. Um, soft focus here. Um, that was just really gentle and, you know, it, it was really just softening up. There's a lot of detail in the photo. Um, there's before and after. And primarily, you know, it's, so I would say more than two thirds, maybe three quarters of the photo is things that are subject to having structure, you know, or detail in them, which is 
not the sky, so everything else, right? Um, I like soft focus because as the name implies, it just softens that up a little bit. And uh, even though I like to accentuate detail, I wanna be selective about it. And I'm gonna get into that in a minute. Um, structure was next, just kind of a global adjustment, uh, but it's kind of negative, right? So it's uh, softer and uh, again, just sort of taking down some of that detail because for me, it's really about the lines and the color and the mood that I'm creating and not about like, wow, that's really sharp or really detailed. I'm not as much focused on that. Uh, and then image radiance here. And, you know, I think we've come up a pretty good ways. Um, here's the before and the after, right? So um, I like where it's going and I can show you the before and the after. Uh, and then this is where, where I get into using radial masks. I've done this in a few videos and they're super powerful. I use them a lot. I really like them. So usually if I want to do multiple filters in a radial mask, um, you could do each filter and then just copy the mask on the same layer. Um, as the same base layer as I you know, used um, earlier, but I prefer to create a different layer for, for a, um, a radial mask if I'm gonna use multiple filters because then I just make the mask once and I'm done and all the filters will apply to it. So in this case, um, oh, let me turn on the layer. Um, there we go. If you look at the center of the photo before and after, much brighter and much more uh, crunchy, I'd say for lack of a better word. So what I did is I, did some smart tone and brought up the shadows, added some structure, and actually took down a little bit of the purplish pink that was kind of showing up in that road there. Uh, and then also did a little bit of temperature and tint work. But let me show you the before and the after. The big difference, of course, that's most noticeable is that center being a lot brighter. So let me show you the radial mask. I'll just open this and show you. So I just created a radial mask, a radial mask. I drew it right in the center. But then I had to invert it because whenever you draw a radial mask, it'll actually start uh, the stuff that's red, um, like in this photo, will actually be the stuff on the outside by default. So the mask is actually on the outside. What you're gonna be adjusting will be outside the, the radial or the circle, right? Uh, oval in this case. Um, so I invert it so that I can work on the center of the photo because that's what I wanna do. And so I did that and I uh, added these adjustments. And one more time, I went from that where, you know, I like it, but it's really just too dark. Um, and I went to that. So I brightened it up a bit. I actually think that works really well with the lights because, um, it, you know, they're kind of coming together. So it sort of seems like it would be brighter down there because it, it has the appearance of being like the lights are closer together. And then you got the Vatican itself kind of glowing. I just like the look. Um, there's the before and the after. I just think it was too dark. And let's be honest, the Vatican and the dome there, that is the uh, the focal point of the photo, right? So I'm a slightly off center. I, obviously you can tell if you're looking at the lines. I, I did that on purpose. I generally don't shoot a lot of things dead center, but uh, in this case, I wanted to be slightly off center. Now it actually causes the lights to be slightly off center, but I'm kind of splitting hairs here. Um, anyway, I did all that. And then what I did is I wanna go do some stuff outside the radial mask. So I just did, uh, you just go up here to this and you say mask copy. And then you go add a new layer. And in this case, I went and I said mask, here we go, mask. And I said uh, paste, which I'm not copying it now, I did that earlier. Um, so I'll paste it and then invert it to go back to where it's working on the outside of the photo. Okay, not outside the photo, outside the, uh, the center. The center is, uh, let me just show you that again. This mask now is the complete opposite of the one in the last layer. So in the last layer, I was working in the stuff that you can see uh, clearly here, the non-red on the previous layer. On this layer, I'm working on the stuff that is in red. That's what, I, you know, I just copy the radial mask, invert it back, and now I've got the uh, outside that oval is where I'm gonna be working. And as you can see, I made a number of changes. I actually used um, the exposure slider and darkened it to create a vignette. And that's something that you can do with radial masks is just add the exposure slider, use a radial mask, and then you can just customize the vignette because it's easy to move the um, uh, the radial mask, shape it, uh, distort it, recenter it, all that kind of stuff. So I'll do that for um, with the exposure slider and the radial um, mask as instead of a vignette many times. So I darken the outside. I added a pretty decent amount of soft focus. If you look, there's uh, the before and there's the after, right? So before after. It just creates a little bit of that dreamy kind of look. And 
you know, I'm kind of going for that. I mean, I, I tend to edit for a little bit of drama anyway. So that's what Soft Focus did. And then I added some Orton as well. There's the before and the after Orton. It gives a little bit of that romantic glow. And so let me just show you this entire layer. There it is with the previous two layers, the base layer with the, with the preset and the adjustments on it, and the layer one, which had the radial mask where I sharpened up, did, did structure and all that, you know, tone, et cetera, inside the radial mask. Um, this layer, now I added the mask and I worked outside of the uh, center of the photo. So I just softened up the edges, darkened it, and that sort of thing. Uh, and really the last step was just a final layer here, just to reduce the saturation a little bit of the oranges and um, uh, the purple and magenta. We're still getting a little bit of a cast on the street. So if you look uh, at the oranges and the buildings, there's the before and the yellows too. They're a little bit more saturated uh, and now a little bit less, right? So that was it really. So I went from that, not including the crop and the straightening, which I showed you in the beginning, to that and one more time the sliding scale right so um, it's just something I like to do with cityscapes I like to add a little bit of mu uh, mood a little bit of drama um, and, and using radial mass allows you to control specific parts of the photo in this case it's the dead center because the Vatican is basically centered in the photo and that's the focal point um, but the radial mass allowed me to key in on that on the first radial mask layer where I was working inside uh, the oval and sharpening it up etc and then the second layer where I was working outside, I softened it up and added some, you know, um, Orton and that kind of stuff just to create a little bit of drama and romance. Uh, it, you know, it is Italy, right? So I guess it ought to be romantic. Uh, anyway, so one more time, there's before, single exposure and after, much smoother, more dramatic, uh, more interesting to my eye, kind of moody, which I like moody in photographs. It just catches my eye. And that's it for workflow. The, the key thing here really was the radial mass. I wanted to go into that in a little bit more depth because I've, I've done a little bit of that in some recent videos. And that's it. I'm almost to 10,000 subscribers. I got some con, uh, a contest. Well, contest is the wrong word. I'm just going to give away some stuff. So stay tuned. I'm going to have a video about that soon. And hit subscribe and like and help me get to 10,000. And you might just win some stuff. So coming soon, I'll be back with that. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, you know, let me know. Leave a comment and uh, we'll go from there, my friends. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Have a great day wherever you are. And adios.